Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be giving you an introduction to the different camera ops that we have inside of cables, what the difference is between them, and why you might use one in a particular scenario. So first of all, let's just give a little basic explanation. When you make a cables patch and you use main loop, by default, you get a camera which is inserted into the scene. Uh, we can't change it right now, but here we see what the camera sees. So everything we're gonna be showing right now is basically gonna be changing the view of the camera. That's the most important thing to remember. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth with all of these ops. This is why we have the documentation and the examples. It's more of an introduction video. Um, so I'll just try and touch upon a few key concepts, but I want to keep it short so people can just get the information they need. So first of all, let's grab the Orbit Controls op. I'm going to pull this in here. And this is familiar to a lot of users. If I use the mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. If I click and hold with the left mouse wheel, uh, left mouse button, I can uh, rotate the scene. If I hold the right mouse button in, I can move my viewpoint in the scene. There's a couple of uh, parameters down here that you can play with, like speed. So when I click and drag, it's a lot faster right now. Um, smoothness I can turn down and it becomes way more snappy and responsive. So just read the documentation, play around with these parameters. It's a great way just to look at your 3D scene nice and quickly. You can also use it to allow uh, a user to interact with your cables patch with the view. So let's just shake this loose. Now, as you can see, the camera view went back to this. This is because Orbit Controls has been removed and the camera defaults to its default position. So imagine you'd want the camera to be further back when the patch loads. Well, this is why we have Transform View. Transform View does literally what it says. It transforms the viewpoint. So if I go to position Z and scroll back, you can see that I'm moving back in the scene. I can use X and Y to move, to change my X and Y position. I can also rotate a scene like this. So imagine I'd want my camera to be like this when um, the patch loads. I just set it like this. I'm going to press Control S to save the patch. I'm going to press F5 to reload. And as you can see, we now have a starting viewpoint um, for the camera. So this is a great thing we can do. I'm going to shake this loose. I'm now going to go to camera. Camera has a huge amount of options. We have projection mode, perspective, orthogonal. Um, I'm just going to move back for a minute. So I'm going to use IZ. So this is the X, Y, Z position of the camera. And right now it's looking at the center parameters. So that's zero, zero, zero. So if I move this to the left, Right now, we get this. If I move it to the right, we get that. So this is just basically you can decide where your camera is in space and at what point it's looking at. Um, there's also a lot of other options here, um, like pan, um, roll. So you can use this to get some really cool cinematic camera effects. I'd, uh, I'd ask you to just look at the uh, documentation page for a full in-depth explanation. And one last important thing is field of view. Um, this we can use to get a very different effect on how a scene looks, and it's more apparent with a lot of 3D geometry. And last but not least, uh, we have Frustum Near and Far. Now, to explain this to beginners, um, anything below this number won't get rendered, and anything past this number won't get rendered. So anything between these two values, and this is the distance from the camera, from the viewport. So if I put this in like 10, everything disappears, right? Because those objects are more than 10 away. So if I increase thrust and far, you can see it's kind of clipping in. And normally you won't have to play around with this. I'm not going too in depth into it. I just wanted to give you an introduction to it. So just read the documentation with this. It's a great op. So let's get rid of this for a moment. Back to the default view. Now let's get a look at camera. So if I grab look at camera, um, and I use IZ, this is like our camera, and we, we now move back. So in a traditional film, the cameraman might follow an object like a car or a person, and let's say we wanna do the same thing now inside of cables. I wanna follow this cube. This is why we've had the guy flying around the whole time. So what we need for this is the coordinates up. Now basically, it's gonna grab the position of any uh, object uh, that comes after it. So I'm gonna plug this in here. And now I'm going to get the X, 
y z coordinates of this cube, right? So I'm going to grab x, I'm going to plug it into look at camera, and I'm going to put it on center x. And as you can now see, we're following the cube. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put it on center y, and I'm going to grab this, I'm going to put it on center Z. You could achieve the same thing with camera. Look at camera is just a more simplified version. Like for example, it doesn't have roll and tilt. So if you just want to have a simple look at camera, this is the op to use. If you want to have way more options, camera is then the op to use. So as you can see, this uh, camera is now following the cube, but we can move where the camera is in relation to it, right? So we could go um, up, we could go left, we could go right. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, one other little trick I want to go into here, and it's not going to be perfect. It's just to try and get the point across. You know, I'm going to I'm going to make the I'm going to make the objects move a little bit quickly now, as you can see. So it's flying left and right on the x-axis, and Let's make it move up pretty fast on the on the y-axis as well. So this is like really just perfect, right? It's always in the middle of uh, the middle of the screen. So let's pull this over here, and now let's click on the x parameter and let's just grab the average interpolation op, right? It needs a trigger, so I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to put the number on, say, 16. And as you can now see, the cube isn't always exactly in the middle. It's like got this weighted slide to it. If I put it on 32, the camera kind of trails after the object. So we could put this on X, Y, and Z. It was just a little um, thing that I wanted to show you. You could also get one of these positions, X, Y, or Z, get a little bit of purling noise or something like that add that to the value of average interpolation, and you could get a kind of camera shake. I'm not going to go into that now. I think that's just something that's a cool exercise for you to try yourself. And the last thing I want to go into is this. Let me just plug this back in. So these ops can be used together, right? So what happens if I get transform view, and let's just say I put the rotation back to zero, and I grab orbit controls. So if I plug orbit controls in after transform view and I click and drag with this, I'm now able to determine how far away it is at the beginning, but I can just still rotate it as normally. And I could put this really far back, but it's gonna have a different effect if we change the order here. So if I get orbit controls, shake it loose, and move it here, you can now see we get this like different effect, right? And I'm not going to go into the math or the theory behind it. I just want to make it clear that you can use these two in conjunction. So this has been an introduction to the different camera ops inside of cables. I hope this video has been educational and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.